Joining us now is a mompreneur we first met a few years ago, and since that time, Sherry French and her company Spabang have come a long way. Welcome, Sherry. Thanks for having me again. And today we're going to talk about getting ready for back to school and things that maybe, I don't know, parents, grandparents, things that they can do, and also balance. Or lack thereof. Or lack thereof, (laughs) which is really, actually, the issue. Yeah, reality. I like to think that I balance things in my life, but I always have 50 balls in the air, can never have them all come down at the same time. So again, I think there's different things that you can do in in your life, whether you're a mompreneur or leaving the house to go to work to make your life at home with your kids easier. And you have a whole bunch of those things with you. Yes. Um, So again, for my house, um, again, with my kids, I leave their uniforms out the night before. I pack lunches the night before. I leave backpacks at the front door before to make things easy in the morning with no drama. But you're a morning person and you actually say that you get up at 5 a.m. so that you can find some time for sharing. To myself, yeah, I like to to run. So again, I get a piece for 45 minutes every morning. I'll do emails. I'll have a cup of tea every morning with nobody awake in my house. So yeah, I get a lot of stuff done. But I also would like to go to bed at nine every night too. Well, this so. is this is Kate's pattern. She's up at the crack of dawn, like when other people are sleeping. Yeah, my yes. pattern's menopause. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on there. But 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 you are Canadian. I mean, yeah. from Oshawa. I am originally from Oshawa. So always hanging around the car industry because your your husband worked uh, in the car business, and this is how you created. Spabang, which is a very Canadian name, and I think we should explain to, to our listeners what Spabang means. Yeah, so Spabang is the sound that a wet tennis ball makes when you're playing road hockey and you do a slap shot against an aluminum garage door. How Canadian is that? Okay, you can't get more Canadian no. than that. <laughs> so while I live in the U.S. now, that is kind of the one piece of my business that is the Canadian part of me. But not everyone knows, obviously, what's Spabang. But how did it come about? Because you you were working with these these plastics, and you yeah. So I also worked in the automotive industry for seventeen years. Was living in China at the time. Mm-hmm. My two girls were going to a British school where they had hot lunches every day, and they're like, "I don't want another hot lunch. Can you start making us some lunches?" So China truly is the land of waste. There's not a lot of recycling going on. Mm-hmm. But every day the girls would bring home their lunch bags with all of the plastic baggies in them, and they were going in the garbage. So. I moved on to the fabric bags that you can see that are really cute, cute patterns. Mm -hmm. I had two girls, super, but they become moldy. And then they want you to put them in the washing machine, which I I did again. My kids are going to have food in it. It's going in the laundry. And I'm not doing laundry every night, right, to to manage that. So, again, being able to work in the automotive industry, I had a friend that was a plastics expert. And he, again, I had the idea in my head. I only worked in quality so I could make sure the product was safe for Mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. But how to do it, he helped me in over an eight-month period. We came up with our line of reusable bags that are sold all over the world now. Now, I found that the first bag, that looks a little like it's got more depth because I found that the first bag, if I wanted to put a sandwich in it, it would squish, it it. squish it and it was too flat. And I sort of wish that it had, had a more, lip, more, more open. Depth. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And again, since I saw you, another thing, I, again, you can't think of everything. I was at a trade show probably about a year into my business and I had five retailers come up and say, can you color on your bags? And I, I'm like, I have no idea. Never tried it. And again, why didn't I try it? But any non-permanent marker, you can actually write notes. We have a little notepad on our bag now. And kids can color. So you're on a road trip, kids can color on the back seat. Oh, so you could leave a nice little like those instead of having to write a note to leave it. I love you, honey. You can write Write on the back of our bags. And then bottom rack of your dishwasher to clean. Super easy. Unbelievable. Pretty cool. The things that people come up with. Well, and again, I brought some products out by other uh, parent inventors today, all created because they had a need in their own home. Teachers, Mm -hmm. I have a couple teacher products. Again, things that you come up with are always within your home. I'm not going to create something out of the blue. I'm sure people do. But truly, mine was a product created out of need within my home. This would be great to stick in a basket for grandkids. Absolutely. Again, Or for your children to use for their children. And to be fair, I have one in my purse every single day with a fully quartered apple in it. So again, when I launched the business, I truly thought my bags belonged in children's store for children. And now we sell in grocery chains, we sell in gift stores, houseware stores, and they're for adults too. Perfect. So what do you have of there? Lots of different products. I'll do the Canadian one first. So again, you saw my bag, Spabang. But Easy Daisies, they were on Dragons Den a few mm-hmm. years ago. A good friend of my friend, uh, Elaine in um, BC, again, was a teacher, tried to have organization within her classroom, and she's created a magnetic schedule. We're in your home every day. 
I've got to feed my pet, wash my hands. And as the child finishes the task, so eat breakfast, it goes over to the done, done side. So again, the structure that I talked about having organization within your home earlier, this helps you do it. Mm-hmm. It's also easy to visualize. All visual, visual cues. Brush your teeth. And I know once I've moved it over, my teeth are brushed. So the kids feel a sense of accomplishment as they finish each task. And you also have something called fun book. Bu- Bites. That was on Shark Tank. Fun bites too. from Shark Tank. My girlfriend, yeah. So this was actually a makeup executive. So again, had a real life before becoming a mom inventor. She makes these in the U.S. And what these are, food cutters. So again, lots of finicky kids don't want to eat their food. It doesn't look pretty. Well, they have cutters. So you can do it on fruit. You can do it on bread sandwiches. And all you do is roll your part onto the, the bread. Stick in, if I get this the right way. It's a puzzle, it's too. It's a puzzle, too. And pop out comes the food. Super cute, and there's all these super bloggers out there, which I am not one of them, that create pictures with these fun bites. And they have different sizes, colors. They have hearts, squares, triangles. Again, was on Shark Tank, and she actually got a deal. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What about flat box? Flat box. Again, another teacher originally that would work in the lunchroom. This lady's from Florida, Rita. And again, that lunchroom table, and I'm a lunch mom at my youngest daughter's school. They're never clean. So she came up with a lunchbox. So actually we take, my girls take our bags into this lunchbox. It folds down into a placemat. And it's machine washable. So you've got your snack bags and you've got your drink box. And you zip up, you're eating on a clean surface. But it's easy to clean as a, for a mom or a grandmother by throwing it in the laundry. I tell you what my mother would use that for. She's always putting tea towels down on the nice dining chairs because children sort of have a tendency to, you know, wipe wipe their sticky yeah, fingers yeah, on the yeah. chair. She would sit them right on that. That would that would cover a, a seat perfectly as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is Flatbox and it's available in Canada at many stores too. Flatbox. Flatbox. Okay. What about Beatrix? Beatrix. I've got them over in my bag. I don't. I did not pull them. <laughs> but, it's, but it's a new lunchbox that was just um, created, made of rice fiber. What's cool about it? Not only does it have cute patterns on this bento box, but if you put it in in the in the dump for ninety days, it's biodegradable and goes away. It's not there for hundreds of years like plastic. So, if you're, what's your advice if two moms, women, grandmoms that, that come up with an idea that find something that's missing the niche? Like, how do they go about making sure their idea isn't going to be stolen from them? A lot of people will say, "Go get a patent." But again, at the end of the day, I have a patent um, applied for a patent for my new product coming out. But at the end of the day, if a big company really wants my product, it'd be a legal fight, and I, as a small business would not be able to go up against a big company. So protection, yes, absolutely. But again, you want to make sure you get legal advice, um, first and foremost. But again, your idea, it costs lots of money too. Again, if you're an original new business and you don't have a ton of money, it's expensive to go and apply for a patent. So for this bag, I don't have a patent. But at the end of the day, you need technology. You need money to create for tools. It's not Mm -hmm. easy to copy. Like, um, you know, a, a, a sticker or a cardboard, we could go home and actually do this. Very easily, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, again, depending on your product, is it easy to copy or hard to copy? I think that makes a difference, too. Let me ask you, you started a few years ago, and you were just starting out when we first spoke yeah, to you. Yeah, absolutely. Are you seeing this influx that uh, economists are talking about, about women coming into the workforce with, I mean, they're hugely entrepreneurial. There are so many women. And again, uh, I think we spoke earlier about my my bags. I created my bag, and I network with over 200 women in the U.S. and Canada all with great ideas. And what I always tell people, too, that do have ideas, you can't possibly think of everything. So being able to network, how do I get a trade show stand so I can talk to someone that's been to a trade show and they can give me a contact, hey, you can go buy your trade show stand from there. So that's the thing. You don't have to think of everything. Use this network of women to help you along in your business. And how can people get in touch with you and find your great products? Spabang, S-P-B-A-N-G dot com. We're available online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. All right, Sherry French, congratulations. I'm so glad that the company's done so well. Well, thank you for having me on again. We're so proud of you. We're so proud. (laughs) Uh, We are going to head into a break. And when we come back, Alina Almeida, our lifestyle guru and regular contributor on what she said, has some tips for allergy sufferers. So you may want to stay with us for that right here on The Jewel.